the 12th of May 2020 Tilt webinar with Natalie Campbell talking about Shobi as an interactive platform to support remote language learning. So we're really looking forward to this session. Um, I've been personally looking forward to this for a long, long time now. And uh, it's great that we've got Natalie coming along talking to us about how Shobi can be used. So Natalie is a learning director for languages at Benbro School in Derby. Uh, she was also the AWL Secondary Language Teacher of the Year for 2016 and is an Apple Distinguished Educator and Shobi Champion. So you can see the rest of her bio on the page, but I've known Natalie personally for a number of years through the Association for Language Learning, and she's a lovely person, and I can't wait uh, for us to learn about how uh, Shobi can be used for promote listening and speaking skills. We'd also like to thank uh, Heike Philp uh, for supporting with, the, uh, with Zoom, um, setting up, uh, well, giving us lots of support on using Zoom over the years. Um, I'd like to thank Helen Myers as well, AWL London Chair, for hosting um, these webinars. And, um, and I'm essentially the scout uh, trying to find people who would, I think would be good to pass on a, a, wes a message uh, in a national forum like this um, to the wider world, because everybody uh, would like support around this time. And um, we feel that webinars are a perfect way of doing that. So we would encourage you to become a member of the Association for Language Learning. If you are a member, I know some of you have done this already, but feel free to put in the chat right now to say if you are a member, if you're not a member, then we would really encourage you to become a member. And as we said already, these, these webinars have been uh, offered for you absolutely for free, uh, accessible, or the, link, the registration links are accessible via the AWL London website, and the recordings of all the webinars are available on my uh, YouTube channel, which is available at Jodale 100. If you do a search on YouTube, you'll be able to find them there. Um, and thank you for those people who are in the committees as well for AWL. So coming soon, we have uh, Paco Fernandez on Thursday talking about uh, the use of music in the languages classroom. So um, that's going to be great fun. Uh, the following week on May the 21st, we have um, uh, Carrie, uh, Kerry Anwin James, who's going to be uh, encouraging us to get interactive with different quizzing platforms. So we would love you to, um, to be involved in that. And then... Uh, on the 27th of May, we have David Shanks doing a session which is particularly aimed at NQT students. And I know there's been a lot of people on Twitter who've been saying, oh, yes, I've signed up for that. And uh, David is amazing. So I'm sure that um, that will be well worth going to as well. So if you have, if you're working your department with um, someone who you feel that would be suitable for, please do encourage them to come along. And so without further ado, I would love to uh, introduce Natalie and to uh, ask her to share her screen and to um, show us all about the wonderful, the wonderful platform Shobi and how it can be used in a remote learning context. So over to you, Natalie. And thanks everyone for coming along for this evening. Hello, everybody. I do apologize. I'm upstairs away from everybody and I'm in a bit of a dark room, but I'll be sharing my iPad screen with you soon so you'll be able to see much more clearly. Uh, thank you for your very kind words indeed, Joe. I was very excited the first time I met Joe. He was delivering a session and my favourite word from the session was a sharrow. So an arrow for sharing work. So I always remember that every time I say sharrow in class. Uh, the next three sessions, Paco, I've seen him deliver at the ALL conference. He's absolutely fantastic. Uh, tried it out on my year sixes and they loved the ideas that he shared. Um, and I've already suggested to the NQTs that I know that they get involved with that session. And quizzing is very close to my heart. Um, it may be worth, and Joe's already mentioned, if you've got an iPad or an iPhone, there is an app that you could use during my session today. Or uh, if you're on the internet on a laptop, you can just go in through the website and I'll give you all of that information as we go along. Um, just wondered if anybody had already been using Shobi, if we got anybody that already had a go here today. If you could put into the chat if you've had a go just so as we know if we've got lots of beginners looks like we've got lots of beginners which is absolutely fine now oh, there's a couple of yeses brilliant thank you very much everybody okay so from my darkened room i will share my screen with you so at the top of your screen i believe you'll see viewing options in a moment um and then you'll be able to see hopefully what i I'm showing you full screen if that's what you 
would like to do. So there we go. So now what you're seeing is my iPad screen. And these are my slides that I've prepared for you. So we've got uh, Shobi. It's an interactive platform. We're going to use it to support our learners while they're not with us in school. And it can be used for live teaching. Uh, it's not face to face, such as Teams or Zoom, but you can chat to your students and interact with them. Um, and post things in real time while they're there, or you can leave them the resources for them to do at their own pace. Okay, so I um, thought we could have a look at how we can support our learners while they're not there with us, how you set it up and how you manage that virtual classroom, particularly useful for those of you that have not done uh, anything with Shobi before. So I'm gonna go through that step-by-step -step with you. Um, and how you can interact with learners through voice notes, uh, through chat, as well as uh, leaving them documents, which can be differentiated as well. And then we'll look at feedback and support. Um, my role at school is also evidence champion. So looking at the um, Education Endowment Foundation's information in their report using digital technology to improve learning it came up that feedback and peer support are really really uh, important but also really really difficult in the situation we all find ourselves in at the minute so this is an opportunity to look at how you can allow those students to help one another even though they're so far apart and hopefully we'll have plenty of time to share some ideas uh, and have a look at what i've left for you in my virtual classroom Okay, my screen should be, there we go. Okay, so it's an online learning platform like a classroom in the, um, hosted on the internet and you can get to it through the app. Obviously, um, you can share content through, um, lost my place in my notes on the app and on the website you can share contact with your students feedback is pretty much the same in both locations and um, support for your students there's a couple of little differences if you are using um, on the internet so you will be able to um, videos you would need to download them before you watch but pretty much everything you can record and you can add um, if you're on an iphone or an ipod you can look at the things but you can't interact as well so just the thing to bear in mind okay so this is the bit where i hope this is going to go really smoothly um, if you either if you've managed to get the app or if you can go online, go to that website there, and I will show you how to set up yourselves as my students. So if um, you are already a user of Shobi, you will need to log out and sign up for a student account. Um, you don't need to use um, an email address, so you can just make up a, a username for the purposes of uh, of this webinar because otherwise you'll be joining as teachers uh, to the group. Okay, so Shobi is just a shobi.com website. Um, this slide I have borrowed from Abdul Chohan, whose company is uh, Think Simple Limited. He has um, set this really nice up really nicely to show you how you get onto the app and how you go through the stages of setting you up so we're signing up first for a student account we're going to have a username you can fill in that information but you don't need an email and then in the top of the corner if somebody would mind putting that into the chat so that people can get that code once i've moved slides in case somebody's not quite ready uh, that is the class code okay so i'm just going to leave this slide for a minute and take you to uh, show you website show you where you should be looking to do that so if we go on to www 
showbe.com at the bottom of the screen if you're going on the web version you'll see sign up for free and then that gives you the options uh, to this is not a good time for the internet to be going slow uh, there you go so you can sign up as a student with a username and then fill in your details there okay wonderful so i'll just leave that on for a minute um, hopefully you guys are all in um joe i can't see anything that's going on in the chat is everybody okay yeah everyone's fine i put the code in the chat and everyone Brilliant. is thank you is fine yeah w wonderful thank you very much so let's uh go and join Shobi. so i'm on my ipad so i'll be using the app as my dog in the background he's probably sat down wondering what on earth's going on okay so here's my classrooms down the side of the page you've got all my different groups I've even brought back my old year 10 group so that I could uh, recycle some of the activities I'd given them uh, to share with my year 10s while they're working away from school. And here is our group. Okay, so let's see if we've got anybody. Fabulous. All of these people already in. That's absolutely wonderful. So if I just go back, this is the page that I have for uh you now that you are my students i've set some activities up already for you so if you're in the app you just click on introductions it should be fairly similar if you are online um, click on introductions now you won't see all the rest of the members of the class you will just see the things that i've shared because the discussion is there you go show me notifications somebody's posted something and you can see a blue line in a paper clip on my screen okay so chris has put something in there already thank you freddie uh brilliant absolutely fabulous so what you can see now is as things are happening in my classroom i'm getting that blue line in that paper clip so i know that i need to go into one of my students folders and see what we've got so we've got an hola, so I can write back to my student and post a message, find out how they are, how their family are doing, ask them if they're all right with the work that I'm giving them, for example. At the top, I have shared items. So as teacher, you can go and give a comment or um, instructions to your whole class all at the same time. Okay, so I'm just going to come out of our classroom a moment. Maybe I should have turned off notifications for show because I'm going to get lots and lots of those. Um, so what you would do is if you wanted to set up a class, you would go next to your name at the top. You would click on the spanner and create a new class, name it. I name my classes with the academic year as well. Because if you're going to get a, a 10C every year, you're going to need to know which of your 10Cs it was over time. And then there's a different code to share with that class. Okay. So I'll go back into our classroom now. So my screen has changed and it's back to our classroom. Introductions. 12 people have posted something and I've given one feedback. I think I just gave an hola. Okay, so you can see on the screen things that I've done. There is the red circle. You can see what's going on. Now, if I wanted to change the due date of a file, I can do it in there. That's uh, okay to do. But if I'm thinking about my class and what notifications I want from my class, so now I can see all my different activities. I click on the spanner up there, go into my class settings. I can go in and change my notifications. So I might not want the whole class's notifications popping up if I'm, I am plugged in, but it doesn't half drain your iPad battery. Um, so it might be that you want to turn off 
Um, some of your notifications, you can either have them all by email. So my email is going to be flooded later. Or you can have them. So you can have them all turned on for on your device and all turned on or off via email as well. That's quite useful. Uh, being away from school, if you're setting the work for the students to do at their own pace, it might be that you want those notifications there. I know one thing um, I've heard people talking about in Facebook groups and on Twitter is not knowing if the students have done their work and having to trawl through and find their work. So that's quite useful to have. I'm going to turn those off for us for now and save those settings. Okay. So I might decide that to introduce or start up my lesson, I'm going to share some work with a whole class. So I will go into my class over here. I have an add button so I can add and then I can add any sort of different file or uh, a photograph or anything like that. Okay. So what I thought would I would do is share a piece of work with you and see if you can open it up. I'm going to go the other way around though. So I'm going to start with the app where I've created the work. So it's uh, some slides that I've made. That's the one. Okay, so I thought it might be nice, quite nice to just have an interactive session if we've got quite a lot of people on, but I will keep talking for those of you that are just watching. That's absolutely fine. So in the ellipsis in the corner, we've got our three dots. I'm going to uh, export. I'm going to change it to a PDF myself. However, Shobi will do that for me. And then it gets to choose where I'm going to share that to. There's Shobi. Now Shobi will let me choose which of my classes. I might confuse my year tens if I share it with them. So I find the tilt class choose the folder i want that to go in i can either share it with everyone or i can look down my list of people and just share it with maybe just give it to helen as an extension piece of work for her to do but for now i'll share that with everyone so that should come up in your page if you might need to refresh the page so just pull down on your page so in Shobi, just to refresh your page, just pull down like that and it'll refresh and your new things will arrive. If you're on the internet, I just tend to go out of a folder and straight back in again and then it, it refreshes itself for you. Okay, so then you've got your piece of work which you can have a look at. Now what I've done, by the looks of it, all my white writing has disappeared. I've done it with print settings, so all my white has disappeared, so I'll go back and do that again for you uh, later. I'm going to leave this show be open, uh, leave it open for a week so you can have a little look around if you're interested after the session. It's quite a lot of information all in one go. And I tend to talk faster and faster if I don't have anybody to slow me down. So I'm going to leave it open for a week so you can go in and have a look um, of the things that I put in there and the ideas that they're in there for you. So what you might um, also think your students might not be doing all their work on their device. Your students might um, be doing their work on paper and you want access to that. Well, this is another way that you can do that. So we can create a new assignment for the class just by going to the spanner, clicking on new assignment, and then all my examples are French and Spanish, but my daughter studies German, so I've borrowed her book. And I thought just so as I don't leave uh, a great chunk of teachers out, I would, uh, she's very kindly said I can upload her work. So what I wanted to show you was how to scan a document. So this might be something that you could ask your students to do. So we're going to add just by clicking on add and your students will be able to do this as well. We're going to scan a document. Okay. So 
As you can see, it's flicking blue. It's trying to work out what a page is. So if I can hold it still long enough. Page one first. Oh, I'm a bit wobbly. There. Okay, that's decided that that's page one. I'm going to go down here to keep scan because I think it's quite a crisp image. It's now saved that scan and is going to let me do a second page. So I'll just have a try at keeping really still for you. Oh, right, so I didn't quite hit it at the right minute for the blue, but I can pull the corners in myself to say what my document is. Might even cut off the bottom of the page, since there's nothing written on there. Keep scan. So down here at the bottom where it says keep scan. So I've now got two pages scanned and I'm going to save those two. I would like them to stay as individual items so that you can see page one and page two. Or you could put the whole thing as a two page document as well and flick between. It's completely up to you. So that's just going to import into them and then you'll be able to see your students work. Um, I've been talking quite a lot, Joe. Is there any questions yet? Am I going too fast or is anything, anybody wondering about anything? Um, no, I think you're doing absolutely brilliantly. Um, right. I, was, I was going to ask about notifications and then you showed everyone how to um, turn those off. So I think that's a really important point. Um, if you, so you don't get bombarded by notifications to show everyone uh, that, how to do that. So that's brilliant. You did that. Uh, Chris in the chat has said, I don't know if this is possible, but he said pity material can't be uploaded to a main store as well as to one or more classes um, uh, work around create a class which gets everything. But I think, I, I think I'm right in saying that you to share something to a, um, you, you have to share it to an individual class. You don't have like a, like a locker as it were, where you can share things no. and from there. You've got to, yeah. So you could use that work around and save it. But like I had my two different year 10 classes, so please do have a look at my daughter's German and check it's all okay for me if you, if you do know German. <laughs> um, I won't open these classes because obviously you'll see all my students' names, but the old year 10 folder from 2017 and 18, I got some really good translations that I wanted to do. So save having to reinvent things for my new year 10s, I went into my old class and I copied an assignment. So what I'll do is I'll copy an assignment from our classroom and give it to my year eights because I don't think they'll be checking tonight. And then I'll, uh, in about, well, when we've all finished this, I'll go and delete it. Otherwise, one of them in the morning will attempt it. <laughs> okay, that's, so, that's lovely. We've got a couple, we have got a couple of questions, if that's okay. Oh, so Cara has asked, have you taught your pupils to use Shobi? Did you give them a webinar or did you teach them before lockdown? Um, my students had done this before, um, but I think I would probably do a very, a very simple version of this with them, or maybe um, a thing I was going to show you was how to screen record. Mm. I could send them, they're used to using show my homework. So I would perhaps make a video of me saying, press this button and then press this button and make sure you use your username that you use for school and you know remind them about passwords i could have done that and made um a video so that they know what they're doing um and i could yeah. have given them that as well but very luckily we've been using this already so yeah so screen recording is a great idea i think for that um we've got one more question oh, a couple of more questions if that's okay yeah. so uh julia's asked how do the students scan from their phone or device do they need the app so in other words if you have the iphone or the uh ipad version you can scan from there but if you're on the internet version the web version is there a scanning option or do you have to use a, another scanning app no you would need to use something else um I, to be honest i've never tried it with the webcam if a student could use their webcam to do it uh -huh. uh, because then you're just taking it off your computer from a file on your computer um, so, so they could, they could use something like Office Lens, couldn't they? Office Lens, yeah. which works on all devices. Uh, well, it would work on. Actually, I don't know if it would work on. 
on a laptop, you'd have to use a mo some some sort of mobile device, but you could certainly use um, Office Lens as a as a generic way of scanning a document and turning it into a PDF. Yeah. Um, and yeah, off the top of my head, I can't think of an obvious way of doing that on the on the laptop. But if most people will have a second device, which will allow them to then scan and upload it that way, I would say. Um, and well, I just will ask one more question, if that's okay. I obviously yes. got lots of things we want to do. So does the Kirsten has asked, does the whole school use Shobi? Um, other subjects or is it just in languages that you're using Shobi? Um, so I moved schools two years ago and my previous school lots and lots of people use Shobi in lessons for homework and everywhere and my new school iPads are just coming in so uh, the primary school have them and um, MFL have them um, and this summer was our big rollout had we not been all sitting in our houses <laughs> so at the moment it's MFL and the primary um, the primary had them before I arrived and MFL were very happy to get theirs too. So it's, it's a growing thing. But at my previous school, everybody had Shobi and the children said, Miss, you've got to label things. I don't know what, you know, what folder I'm going into. Am I going into PE? Am I going into French? So yes, um, I have worked in a school where it's used really widely um, and it's just taking off at my new school. Fantastic. That's excellent. Thank you so much. So, um, yeah, let's carry on. And uh, thanks ever so much for filling those questions, Natalie. That's lovely. Thank you, Doki. Um, so my daughter's German work, um, I can rename that with the title of what I've got. So if I knew what my daughter's German work was about, I could rename that. I think it was tense work of some description she was doing. Let's pretend that that's what the German says. Um, so she could call that tense work page one or the day. I've seen quite a lot of people annotating it as week beginning and then what the work was. So then as she's handing things in, it, it could be done that way. So what I did was hold on to it. There we go. Hold on to it. Uh, keep my finger on it and it comes up with all my options of what I can do with it. Okay. Right. Um, so we mentioned taking things off camera roll, which might be a workaround if your students aren't able to scan their work. Um, you might want to, for example, um, if we just go into a piece of Abby's work, not that I know what she's written, but Monday the 9th of March, I'm guessing. Oh, there you go, modal verbs. So what I might want to do is, if your students sends it you as a photograph and you put it into Shobi, into their folder, and I'll show you how to do that, then you could do the annotations on the photograph in exactly the same way as I'm doing them now on her scanned document. So you have got uh, quite a lot of options about what you do with this piece of work. You've got a pen. You can go for the classic marking in red. You can go for the purple pen of progress, or you can mark in green and friendly green. Uh, you can say, right, I want that to be um, highlighted for my uh, circles for my student. Next, you've got to highlight a pen in lots of colours. So you can go and highlight things in the text that you want your student to particularly pay attention to. Um, you've got a rubber, if you've done the wrong thing, you can rub off what you've done. So that's across the top. The one with the four headed arrow that's blue at the minute on the left of the, of the, the middle section, this one here, that's your mouse. So if you're in that mode, you're not gonna start drawing all over their work. That one works like a mouse. Okay, over here, um, I call these coins. My students really like them being coins, but they're definitely speech bubbles. Um, this one will allow you to write text and this one voice. So you can all see my daughter's work. So I wondered if any of you that are using um, the, an iPad perhaps would like to um, read a couple of the sentences to us. So what you do is you tap on this one with a play button in it, tap on the screen, and then it gives you a um, 
you can give verbal feedback to your students a lot quicker than writing things to your students as well uh, and vice vice versa your students can um, speak something to you and send and uh, attach that so I'm going to show you that with the lovely photo task in a moment so I could leave feedback for her using just the record button down here you have really lovely handwriting and I wish I knew what your work was about um, but I'm quite sure you're a hard-working student and it's all accurate so then I can click save and that will add that note now to that student's work so that can be used as feedback from the teacher only me and the student will see it so currently I've put it in the shared folder so it out, goes out to all of the students. All of you will be able to see this piece of work. So imagine this might be a worksheet from the teacher and you can, students can give their answers using these uh, coins as I like to call them, but speech bubbles really. This one here as well, I can click on my little uh, icon. Yours might come up as little golden coins. Uh, but my I've added my picture to my account and they do disappear down so you can see the rest of the piece of work and if you use the mouse up here you can move around the page so if you think the bit I chose hasn't got much to look at when it's set to that mouse function you can zoom in a bit lower down go up I just, can I just ask a couple of questions Natalie? No, is that okay so um someone said uh, i'm using safari and i couldn't record so on the ipad in safari um negan needs to use the app doesn't she it won't work within yes. safari or, or even like if it was on say the mac or what have you in safari uh can you record in the browser or can you only do that via the app do you know um so pinned voice notes will work in the web app according to Shobi themselves, but whether because you're on an iPad using Safari, it's preferring the app. That okay, might and then Ju amazing. Julie has said, I'm on a Mac and it doesn't record, but maybe maybe it's not working in Safari. Maybe Julie, if you find you try, try in Chrome on the Mac, if you have Chrome installed um, and try that out. And then someone else has already uh, has also said that um, on the phone, on the iPhone, she can't Lonely see the listen. tab at the top. Yeah, so um, I had a check for us earlier. And no, I thought I found the answer. Yes. So different features for the app versus the website. This is the document that I've mm -hmm. got in front of me. So this is what Shobi have said. So the pen tool and the highlighter tool will work web app and iPad, but not on phone. Um, so it is saying that the pinned voice notes, which is the ones that I'm using, the little coin versions, that they should record on web app. Mm. Right. So, so possibly in Chrome. So, yeah. yeah so we would suggest everyone tries Chrome because normally everything works on Chrome, I find. Yes. And just see if that works. That's lovely. Uh, thanks so much. And that's really handy seeing that graphic in front of us. That's brilliant. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so what have I shown you? Um, yes, yeah, so you can give feedback to students. So if anybody's been able to do any recording for me, that would be wonderful if we've got a volunteer. I'm just having a look down. I've got a couple of people that have got paper clips. They've had a look at that. Um, I might see what Natasha's, ah, so she's, there's Natasha's version of it. You see at the top, it's got Natasha's name instead of mine now. And then anything that Natasha's added, it will show me. It might be that Natasha just had a look at it. Uh, I did have a look, but I can't actually do anything because I'm on an iPhone. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> but if Natasha had, um, she could have left feedback to her student or Natasha today is my student. So she might have... I could have left her some information about, are you sure that's correct? And she could have said, yes, I do think it's correctness because of this, or, oh no, I see my mistake. Um, that should have 
read and, and she could do her, her corrections to me on it. So it's quite nice to have that chat and that feedback, I think, for you students to hear your voice. But I'm so sorry, Natasha, it's not working on a phone. Um, OK, let's see what we've got on this one. So this is another one, maybe that's um, no, the only thing I'm seeing is my own recording. So perhaps somebody went in and played it. Wonderful. There you go. So on this one, uh, we've got a comment as well, and we've got some highlighting. So it's quite a nice um, thing to be able to leave comment for your student, um, highlight important things in the document. So it's quite a lot of things that if you can get your students used to using it, is quite good for feedback. The voice can be in there. Um, as well as highlighting errors or important things. Uh, right, so my next thing I want to show you um, was to do with videos and photos. Now, um, audio feedback as a teacher, so this might be the answer to the question, Joe, but I, there's different accounts you can get with Shobi. There is a basic account that does really, really lots of stuff and um, that you would need. Nope. Oh, I had all of these set up for you earlier. Um, basically, the basic account, you can have 10, ac 10 activities or 10 assignments live and then um, you can have as many classes as you like, but you can only have 10 things going on at once. It, then you can pay for the next level up. That's what I've got, the next level up, the paid one. So my videos can be longer, my voice notes can be longer, um, and I can upload bigger files. So there's, there's some differences there, but for a long time I had the basic account and I could do an awful lot of things that I needed to do for my students with it without having to upgrade. Um, videos are shorter and feedback is uh, limited without, if you have the basic one, but that's okay. You just add more comments, lots of short comments instead of one long um, comment. Okay, so another thing I quite like is being able to have voice for my students. And some of them even go, oh, I haven't heard your voice for ages, Mrs. I haven't seen you for such a long time. And so it's quite nice for them. Um, one thing that I did was... Here we go. I made this using clips on my phone. Um, but I can... I'm going to stop that. I can use the... I don't think you can see it. I think you can just see it whole screen. Okay, let's do it this way. If I select that one now in the top left of the screen, you can see the sharrow, the square that's for sharing, the sharing arrow. If you click on there, I've selected that video now. Show becomes up in my choices. And then as I showed you before, I select the correct class that I would like it to go to. I select our class. I select which part, which activity it's linked to, and I could send you a video. Okay, so what I thought I'd have a little go at was, and if anybody else wanted to do and send us a little video or something that they've got on their device, that would be fabulous. I thought I'd show you how to make one. Okay. Um, I've drawn a little line on my notes, Joe. That means stop for any questions. Are there any questions before I carry on? No, not at the moment. Everyone's just working out what works um, for recording in the web version. So it seems that if you're on a Mac, uh, Firefox works fine. Uh, really? Some people are getting it to work in Chrome on a Surface, for example, yeah. but um, others are not. So I think 
you know, just I would say just have a play and, and depending Easy. on which device mm -hmm. you're using, work out which is the best way forward. Um, yeah, but I think that's that's everything so far. This is fabulous. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. OK. Um, so a favorite app of mine. However, I checked it out and you are since I got this app, you are now only allowed to make one uh, slideshow and then you have to pay. So I'm going to show it you anyway, because it's one of my favorite ones They do do a teacher discount. Um, but uh, Joe and I were talking about this app Haiku Deck and we're both of the mind when an app starts charging you a lot of money, we get a bit, we get a bit thinking, hmm, we might look for something else that's out there. Um, but it's a firm favorite of mine and I've had it a long time. So I, I ended up not having to pay. Uh, for it, but it's called Haiku Deck. And what I like, it's for presenting language. Um, a big worry while our students aren't with us uh, is how on earth we're going to get them doing speaking and listening. So for me, Shobi is a really good way of getting the speaking and the listening activities in for them. Um, so by adding voice to some slides that you've got for example I think is a really nice way of getting the children at that exposure so what I wanted to show you is uh where's my little assistant gone up in this corner if I slide down in this direction on my iPad I get the chance to do screen recording so I could just do this in PowerPoint and add voice and then upload that I could do the same thing in Keynote, um, but I quite like this because then you can use your other different bits and bobs that you might have or your apps. So we go down from this corner. Here we've got a record function. Would it be possible to show people how to set up um, the screen recording within Control Center? Because it's not there by default, is it? Yeah. Would that be okay? Just so that, because uh, people might do what you're showing and then not have the not screen recording. Yeah, yeah, is that okay? Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So I've gone into settings, I've gone into control center, and then the things are here that you can add to that control center. So coming down from this corner, that's my set of things that are set up. And there are all of these different ones. So screen recording is the one that you want to add. And then obviously you can see here the things that you could add just by clicking on an add, it would add an extra thing to, we'll add a stopwatch. Okay, and then that's now in my included things. Okay, so if anybody's wanting to do that, I've gone into settings, control center, customize controls, and then there are the things that you can add. And now in this corner, there's my stopwatch that I've just added. And this is the one that we're doing that I was hoping to show you today. Now, I'm a bit dubious because it's a bit gray, whether it's not gonna work while I'm broadcasting to you. Uh, but I'm gonna pretend that it is if it's not and I, take you through the steps anyway. I think that might be the case actually thinking about it, Natalie, because when I've tried to present on my iPad at, at sessions, what have you, it's not allowed me to uh, record screen recording when I'm plugged in via the um, HMI to uh, mm -hmm. lightning connector so but as long as you explain what should happen that's and yeah if you can mention about adding the microphone enabling the microphone in screen recording mm -hmm. that'd be great as well okay so that should be lit up white like the others and then it should count me down three two one and then I should be able to record uh, what I'm doing for my students. So then that would be counting down from the corner. I would be getting myself ready quickly and then I would launch my slides, add my voice, el comedor, el comedor, el cuarto de baño, el cuarto de baño. So you can imagine if you can add 
the voice to each slide so the children can hear the repetition. That's going to be quite useful. When I finish going through all my slides, I just go back up to the top corner again, swipe down from that corner and I will be able to stop my recording. Okay. Um, so that's uh, another way that you could add a video to your what your students are, are seeing and getting from you. And I just thought it was quite nice. Instead of having to read all their instructions from their teachers all the time, um, we've certainly been putting videos on for our students recently and we've been getting a lot more response from our students and quick response. Um, they've chosen us over PowerPoint slides from their science teachers, so it's quite smug about that one. Um, so, so just to be clear with everyone, when you launch screen recording to enable the microphone, you have to hold down, don't you, on the screen recording icon and then another um, icon will appear with a microphone on it and then you then tap on that on the microphone icon and that then allows you to record a voiceover while screen recording. Otherwise, it's turned off by default. So if you want to add a voiceover, you have to hold your finger down on the screen recording icon and then the microphone icon will pop up, you tap on it, it then goes red, and then when you record your screen, it will record the microphone at the same time. Thank you, Joe. Oh, fantastic. Um, another feature that is for um, pro users is a class discussion. Uh, one of the things I mentioned was students feedback and interaction with peers being quite important for learning in a digital way. Um, the EEF uh, document that I mentioned uh, talks about that. Um, there is a class discussion so you could have like we have a chat this evening which Helen and, and Joe are keeping their eye on for us. You could switch that on for your students. Um, you obviously need to marshal it, you can turn it on and off when you need to. Um, so you could allow students to post so people can go into the class discussion. You will get the silly things like, hello, what are you doing to the person that they're sat next to? Um, but that's an option that people could have that chat discuss with one another as well what's going on. It's quite nice to have. And then just using up here, you can turn that on and off. But that is a pro feature. So if you've got the basic you won't have that option, unfortunately. Um, but they could post questions to you and then you could use your, if we go into uh, this one maybe. So if you go into your photo tasks, you could post something and then your teacher can um, share your comments or your good ideas with the class. So I'm currently looking in Cara's uh, assignment. And there you go. Wow. Okay, so we've got um, information there and that would be a really nice way if I could share that with the other students in the class. Um, then everybody can see uh, what's what. So. Um, I thought it might be quite quite a good time to have show you how to um, there was a question earlier about um, creating an archive or keeping things for another class so if I thought that this activity with all these photos was quite a good activity and wanted to use it recycle it the next year or use it with another class I could go up the top here especially good if you've got two year eight classes and you want to set the same work for both. So you could plan all your activities for this week in your folder and then you simply go up there, copy assignment. So we've gone to the spanner and then we've gone to copy assignment. And then I'll give it to my year eights. They'll be quite confused, but I'll still delete it later on chosen it's going to go to my year eights and it'll go and then it none of the comments from this class would move just my original materials would move to the next class 
okay if i put any comments to the whole class i think they go as well so you might want to go back through and if you put folks you've got 10 minutes to get this finished you can delete those comments okay uh, so i thought it might be quite nice to have a look at a few of the activities one of the things i thought would be good was um to let people have a go at things so you've got some different photos that might be your photo task here um, you've got a coin from me with that amazing opening gcse question what is in the photo um, and you can get your students to answer you they can use a text box uh, we saw that on my daughter's german work somebody's written great work she will be pleased. Uh, you can add voice notes for those of you that that's working for at the moment. You can add uh, a little text box that will pop open and close like mine is doing. And then obviously you can even write on what you want to say in a sentence, but you're going to have to be quite accurate, I think, because it will probably be a bit of a mess. Yeah, and it doesn't show up very well against this strong photograph. So, um, are there any uh, questions? Do people want to have a little look through? Or shall I just leave the Shoby classroom open for a week so people can have a look at their leisure? Um, so there aren't, there aren't any questions, but just to be very, very clear then. So you're st uh, sharing some photos and what have you in um, in our class. So that means that by the uh, students accessing that content, it means they basically all get a copy of it. Yeah. And then they can all then interact with it, leave voice notes and what have you. But it's not uh, a question of having a photo that then everybody can no. all leave the, the comment all together in the same space. Each person is automatically getting a copy of your resources and then are handing it in to you uh, individually. You're not getting lots of people all collaborating on the same document. Is that right? No, you can work in groups um, and you could set them up working in groups and they could collaborate like a breakout room in Zoom, that sort of idea. But in this one, they are doing their work on their own and I'm the only person that gets to see as the teacher what each of my students has done. Fantastic. That's really lovely. Thank you. Right, we don't have any other questions. Uh, we're sort of coming up to sort of nine o'clock-ish now. I don't know what else you wanted us to have a play with, but this has been fabulous, Natalie, thank you. Okay, wonderful. Um, another thing you can do, if I just go really quickly through my last few points, um, because I know if people have got questions, I might be saving them up till the end. Um, you can also manage, if you come into where you get your list of assignments, you can also manage your class members. So you, if you needed to, you could ex, you could get rid of a student. I'm not going to do it to Helen. That would be terribly awful. But <laughs> I can block her from the class. So that's if a student's left, moved to another school, and maybe you thought I don't want them to be able to get in if we've got a class discussion going on, and that student's gone. So you can block a student going through there and going into class members. Um, you can go in and you can have a new class code as well. So no one else can join. Um, once you'd, so they can't go sharing the code with their friends. You can scramble the code and no one else can get in. Um, so that's another possible. And most of the documents that I've been showing you, can the Shobi converts PowerPoints or keynotes or whatever you've done to a sort of like a PDF idea so that you can do all the annotations on them within Shobi and then you can export them with all of those things if you wanted to. Um, you can also get things from your Google Drive or your OneDrive. So just really quickly. Go to add over here, go to file, and then you could go and search your OneDrive or your iCloud Drive, your Google Drive, and find uh, whatever materials you want to share with your class. So that is possibly an answer to that earlier question, where can I keep my work? 
and hand it out. Yeah, you good point. Have it stored in your Google Drive. This is my year 10 materials on the future tense, and you could move them from there. So that is a possible. Um, uh, one, one thing that comes to mind is moderation. So if you've got uh, a class discussion and someone writes something inappropriate, how can you moderate that? So if you've got uh, your class discussion going on and somebody had posted like Mrs. Campbell's so sock smell, then you would, if I show you in here, it works exactly the same idea you in the app. You pull your finger across, oh, hello. Um, over here where the little lines are, if I drag across, holding onto those little lines, I get the opportunity to delete. Mm. Come on, work. There you go. And so you could delete a, a, a child's post that way. Okay. I'd rather put something okay. not very nice. Lovely. Um, just by using those, those lines and then pulling across, you get the options. So... Could you say there's a question from, um, we've got somebody watching on YouTube on live stream, Stephen, and he said, can students leave messages for other students? They can if you've got class discussion and if you have uh, class discussion switched on, they can chat to one another in there. Um, but that's completely up to the teacher, whether the teacher leaves that function for them or switches it off. Um, but you could, as long as it didn't become too big a job, I suppose if they sent something via the classroom, you could copy it and paste it into the student that they're wanting to talk to. Um, you could post it into their folder for them. Thanks. So that's if it's possible. And is it possible to have student to student private messages? I presume not. Presumably, no. No, no teach can see everything. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, just really, really safe um obviously data protection and things um you can delete posts between you and a student um everything is gdpr compliant with shobi so just check with your school and your school's policy um whether it's okay to use you know something where you can chat to students especially with the new uh, way you were having to teach at the minute that's quite tricky um I mean, I chat with my students through Shobi. It's usually, hi, miss, what are you doing today? Sitting on my sofa, doing schoolwork. What are you doing? Oh, I'm sitting on my sofa doing my schoolwork, miss. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's just things to bear in mind uh, uh, school-wise. So that's all from me, um, I believe. If there are any questions, shall I stop sharing my screen and... Yeah, if that's okay. Maybe we all go to gallery view. That was really fabulous. Um, I think we've actually done all the questions. Uh, if you do have any other questions, feel free to put them in the in the chat. Um, that would be that would be lovely. But um, I think that was absolutely fabulous. Thank you ever so much. I think that's that's really clear. The step to step guide on how to use Shobi. Um, just in relation to the free version and the pro version, the premium version. Mm -hmm. I know you said you can sort of record shorter. Uh, audio messages have you got an idea on is it like the number that you can record or is it like the length of no. them or do you know what the I think I think people would find it really useful if you could give a little bit more detail of course about, I, about that. I had it set up on um, I had all my different web pages show you set up but I've got it on a piece of paper as well just in case ever prepared um, video clip length is one minute on the free version and 10 minutes on uh, the pro version and the voice note is one minute, whereas it's half an hour on the pro. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So okay. my students just used to, when I had the basic one, they just used to um, stop every 50 seconds and end up sending me three to get their full presentations done. So it's, it's work roundable. You don't have to spend the money on the pro. There's definitely ways around it, shorter videos to send out to your students, bit by bit um, and obviously sending um, voices just one minute at a time. Yeah, that's fabulous. That's really, really helpful. I think that's all. I can't see any other questions. People are just um, saying thank you ever so much for, for a great presentation, which is, which is lovely. So I think with that in mind, if everyone wants to uh, 
uh, turn on their webcams and their microphones and give uh, the lovely Natalie a round of applause for such a great presentation. And um, is that wine or Coca-Cola? Or... Uh, this is Coke Zero. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> and we we'll, can give uh, Natalie a great round of applause. Well done, Natalie. That was great. Fantastic stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. <laughs> lovely. Lovely, lovely stuff. Yeah, and I'm really glad that um, you showed us uh, that because I know that, uh, well, at the beginning we saw that a lot of people hadn't heard of Shobi before, mm. and it just shows that it is another option for asynchronous listening and speaking practice. Um, uh, and you could do a lot with a free version. And it's uh, and I love the uh, voice notes on PDFs and all that sort of thing. That's just great. And Thank before you. everyone goes, or because I know that some people had to go, if you could open up your... Um, your webcams would be great because I normally like to have a little picture, a little class mm -hmm. photo. Good idea. Onto the website, <laughs> if that's okay. So, could, uh, this is the class of ED, whatever we are, EDZ something or other. <laughs> okay, so here goes, and I'll tell you just in case. So, here goes one, two, three. There we are. That's one. And sort up my fringe before we do that. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to cut it yesterday. Of course. <laughs> okay. So again, uh, I'm a dog, Helen. He's had my cuts. <laughs> if I dare do mine. <laughs> Here goes. And again. So we've got Laura there too. Lovely. And one, two, three. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh. Thank you very much. Oh, lovely. That's lovely. Well, that was great. Thank you so much to you, Natalie. Thank you, Thank you. Joe, for all you do to bring us all together. You called yourself the Scout. It's a bit more than a Scout. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. Well, I'm, a, I'm a Scout. I'm a digital bouncer. I'm everything. Yeah, yeah. love it. Brilliant. Inspired what by um, you know what you talk about. We've got this word Sharrow now. Oh yeah, it's great. I've been using it for years. It's lovely. Right, <laughs> should we press uh, stop recording now? If that's okay. And um, yeah, brilliant stuff.